MTD have come to the Willemann Macadel factory in Switzerland, in Delamont. Now, Pascal, who are Willemann Macadel? So, Willemann Macadel is a Swiss uh, machining solution supplier uh, based here in Delamont, in Switzerland. Brilliant. So, we're going to go have a look. This is the only factory in uh, the world that makes Willemann Macadel machines. Let's go take a look inside. So what range of machines do you make at Willem Macadel? So in Willem Macadel we produce some uh, milling machine, empty machine, that means milling turning, and also standard uh, milling machine, uh, five axis simultaneous machine. Okay, and these are the empty range we're looking at here. How many machines do you make a, a month? A month, uh, I would say only on empty machine, we will arrive at about 150 machines per year. Right, okay, and everything is assembled on site? Everything is assembled here in this workshop. And where do you source all your parts? So the part we have all here in Vitamin, we order by our supplier in the region, local supplier, and all arrive just in time before the assembly. And what about, so you export these to the world. Yeah. Do, they, um, do all your agencies hold spare parts as well? So we have uh, agencies, so for example, for UK, for uh, England, so they will have their own stock for spare parts. And also we have our agencies, uh, USA, China, India, and also they wear their own stock, spare parts for his urgent needs. So as soon as you export one of these uh, to China, for example, they can, if, if anything breaks, they can go down straight to the agency and grab some spare parts and uh, yes. fix it straight away. So if they don't have the spare parts, the parts will be chipped from here, directly from Switzerland to China to India. So we're here in the application department, Pascal, but these machines are the, now the finished article. And what, what are they actually capable of? So on the type of machine, we can have uh, an automation, for example, full automated robots, six axis robots, or a manipulator. Uh, we can have the meaning spindle, uh, 42,000 RPM. Uh, we can have the bar feeder, two, three meter, for example. Uh, we can have the high pressure, 80 bar. We can have a lot of solution to the needs of the customers. It all fits in. What's the, what's the working envelope of this machine? How, how big is the footprint? So the footprint is about uh, four square meter, the machine itself, after all the accessories will be behind it. Which is absolutely tiny. And imagine the material you could feed in with a three meter bar feeder. Yeah, three meter automatic bar feeder. That means you can have several bar of three meters. Yeah, but these are specialist machines though. They're not just for standard subcontractors. What applications uh, are they, do, they, do they shine best in? So today our application is more in different types like in the um, watch industry, jewelry and in medical. So on all these types, the, the common point is that there is some small batches or individual machining solution. That means sometimes we have batch of one part. So you do one part, but why do you do one part with a bar feeder? How does that work? So, uh, you will start always with the same hardware, so the, the bar is the same, and after only with the machining program dedicated to the, to the parts, with a tool list difference, the machine will propose itself the production uh, according to a production management software. And this is almost what they're doing in, I guess, car manufacture, where rather than having the same car, you have 100 off of the same car, you have each car has a slightly different specification to what the customer needs. Yeah. And this is what you're doing here in the medical sector. Yeah. So in medical, uh, we have customized parts, individual parts. So that means one part goes for one patient. That's all. You cannot use this same part for another patient. So you have one chance to make the first part good. That's all. And how do you make a first part good? So the machine has a very high precision and also we, uh, we take care about the stability of the machine. So the stability, mechanical stability and also thermal stability. So we control all the temperature of the machine, the oil, uh, the different components and also we have an option, this is the DTS, dynamic thermal stabilization. 
that will control the deviation, the potential deviation of the machine by the variation of the temperature. Okay, so if you're making good parts and you're feeding a lot of material in with a bar feeder, how do you get all the material? How do you get the good parts out? How do you do? You have parts catchers, robots. How does it work? So today here there is a simple uh, spiveling chute, so easy solution. But we can have a robot with different drawers. Uh, one part goes in one position, so you know exactly where is your parts uh, produced at uh, in different uh, position. Brilliant. So some high tech machines, but let's go have a look at the actual parts you make in the showroom. So we're here in the showroom and we've got some brand new machines here, but we're also looking at the parts. So what industry are we showing off here and what kind of operations would you be doing on these parts? So here we have different applications. At first here all the medical application with uh, the spine, with uh, medical instruments, with dental uh, application, abutment, crowns and orthopedic parts. So on all of these parts, I guess they'd be doing very different. There's very different features. There's a lot of five axis, but also there's a lot of drilled holes, tapped holes. And on the little spinal replacements, you've got these really strange little kind of raspy sawtooth forms. How do you machine those? So this is very specific because sometimes there was unique parts. So uh, individual application, individual parts, for example, for orthopedic. Uh, also for spine, it could be very specific for uh, specific patients. Okay, so same as like this, uh, I guess this is like a roof of a mouth. This would be yeah. scanned by some, by some dentist exactly. and sent in and then machined on a, on a woman in Macadale. Exactly, so we receive a model. Uh, the model is converted in a STL file and after we can machine the, this directly on, a, on our machine. And what makes these round parts uh, good for one of your machines? So here, the, the good part is that this is unique. So we, we have only one, one chance to achieve the good finished parts. So here the cycle time could be more than 30 minutes, one hour, one hour, 30. Because you're doing 30. all the complex five axis so, movement. Yeah, so you cannot restart 10 times. So the target is really to, to produce the parts the first at the first test, at the first trace. Especially if it takes an hour and a half to make. You don't want to sit there and find out it's, it's gone wrong. Okay. And then moving on, what, are the, what is the industry we're looking at here? So here, we have the component for watch industry, what the, the watch cases, the, the main plates, uh, the bridges, what go inside uh, the watch. And uh, parallel to this application, we have all the jewelry, uh, the ring, uh, specific parts. So what kind of materials would you be making the jewelry out of and the watch, watch making? Uh, a lot of time, this could be uh, precious metal, like gold, for example. Uh, for jewelry, for watch also, sometimes not always, but we have specific decoration, for example, the main plates, uh, specific decoration. Yeah, you look at the main plates and they've got these lovely, uh, almost like burnished finishes. How do you achieve, do you achieve those finishes on a Willem and Macadale? Exactly. This is the finished part coming out the machine. Right, okay. So this is the decoration. Decoration is very specific uh, for this domain. Um, very used in the high level watches. Brilliant, so moving on from watchmaking, which obviously here in the heart of Switzerland, it's all about the watches, but moving on to uh, an industry that I'm slightly more familiar with, it's aerospace now. So we look at impellers, we've got uh, like avionics, uh, electronics, housings, which you'd have thought these are very different parts. They'd need very different machines, but actually these are all for William and Macadell machines as well. It's completely different. It's completely different. Here we have some blades, uh, some gyroscope, some turbine, uh, a lot of time this part are going for aerospace domain, uh, but the, the rules is always the same, the precision, uh, the first part has to be good. And with these five axis machines, it's all about the synchronicity of the axes as well, which maintains that the, uh, the tooth contact on the blade and make, make sure that the airflow along the blade is gonna be perfect. Yeah, exactly. So it's all about reducing the mismatch and whatnot um, in the five axis operations. But when it comes to these blades as well, I guess, would you have different kinds of blade forms, blade roots that would um, apply to a William Macadale where you can run different blades off of the same bar stock? So this is uh, a blade coming from a bar, 
Uh, normally, it's not like this. Uh, this was probably to, to show the possibility to start from a bar, but here we remove a lot of chips. But it's possible to make any uh, shapes what is including in the bar dimension. So you can, you can make, so for the avionics, electronics, housing, exactly. if you've got different kinds of parts, you could be making those off the same bar stock. Exactly. Brilliant. And let's move on to, I guess this is, this is kind of the most diverse set of industries here. What are we looking at? Yeah, so uh, vitamin McAday, we, we say never know. If uh, customers arrive with a specific application, we say, okay, let's go. We make uh, an estimation, we, uh, calculation of the chance to achieve the result and after we go and we test. Sometimes we don't arrive to the expected result, but we, we go in new direction, maybe that's all the supplier are not ready to make to make this. So what you're showing off, I see there's a mini gas turbine here. Can I take this home, please, Pascal? Uh, <laughs> this is, yeah, a small uh, model parts. Uh, this is only for a... Uh, just for show, but that is a fantastic show, looking yeah, yeah. part. So I can't take that home, are you saying? Yeah, no, it's not possible. No, I thought you never said no. <laughs> this is okay. this is the last model we have. <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. Everyone else has taken them too. So again, we've got connector housings here, little connector inserts, which is made, what kind of material is this made out of? Yeah, so this is a plastic uh, or composite part, uh, specific, I don't know the application, but every, this part have a specification uh, where the precision, where the, uh, some characterization is necessary. Okay, and I've seen there's so many diverse materials here. We've got gold, brass, titanium, aluminium. What I find fascinating though, look at this last little part here. Even it's a big part of this. What material is this, and how are you cutting it? Uh, this is glass, quartz. You got? You can't cut glass, can you? Yeah, we have a specific uh, application, specific machine uh, solution, ultrasonic boring uh, for this kind of uh, material. Uh, it's really new. And all of these parts can be made on a Villamin Macadel machine, whether it be the Milton or the standard five axis machine. And they're all made here in the beautiful countryside of Switzerland. Yeah, exactly. Brilliant. I'm going to go get some fondue.